Hey, what's the coolest thing you got that belonged to your brother? That's a good My question. Brother. Yeah, you got anything cool that you're hanging on to that means a lot to only you? Only a hood. You got a hood. What is a hood? The good ranch hood. All right. Do you I like that? Like, do you like that sort of stuff? I'm not a collector. No, you're not. Like most of my stuff I've got rid of because it's in the attic rotten. You know what I mean? It's just not good. You don't want it sitting around. You want somebody to enjoy it. Right. Is it something you wish you had? Like an old fire suit or something? Not really. No? No. You wouldn't hang it out? If you had one, you wouldn't put it out? No. No. See, when Dan Jr. was little, we put all them posters on his walls and stuff. But when he moved out, he just went away. Yeah. I got a lot of them, but fire suits and all that stuff. The only place you got to put them is the attic, so they're going to just rot away up there. You can put them out to show, right, to look I at. I don't have that big a house to put them out. All right. It's just a regular house. I know, but even a regular house can show a uniform off. Hell, I mean, this the best thing I got belongs to Dale Jr. We got a tiny regular room with all this stuff in it. Right. I know you don't want your house to look like this. <laughs> Sherry probably had something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, she don't want she don't want no racing stuff no. out. She don't? Mm. Only thing racing much is what he gave me. I got it. what I give you? My helmet. Hmm. From where? What? Do, do you know? What was the, what was the helmet of? The baseball car. The hey, baseball, baseball car! car. Hey, there it is. We were looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. He we just it. were looking for that, weren't we? Yeah. But there's more to the story because he gave it to me out there, probably on the grass. At the race. Before I went to the truck. In Victor Lane. He gave it to me. Oh, you right. gave it in, away before you even got so, to Victor Lane. <laughs> so I gave it to Dan Jr. He's 11 or something. I give it to him and his buddies with him. He's carrying it around. So we go to the truck. Well, who shows up? The baseball people wanting the helmet. Because I guess they were supposed to get it or something. Probably. For some reason. Maybe. Wouldn't give it to them. So I assume there's a, another one somewhere they had to remake or something. You got the real deal. <laughs> yeah, I got the earphones and everything with it. The actual. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. If he gave it to you in the grass, it could probably just there <laughs> plugged it. We were wondering where it was. I told you that before. I know. I know. He <laughs> come, they come asking me the other day. They're like, we're trying to find this one one item. We can't find it. And I'm like, what is it? And they're like, the baseball helmet. I'm like, well, somewhere. It's in a box somewhere. It's for the, like, we were looking for, for items the in the Hall of Fame. Fame for his corner of the Hall of Fame when he's inducted. Yeah. We might bar it. Wait a minute. Yeah, I don't know if he'll let it. Uh, he, well, it's his. Well, it's his. I know, but you could donate it to the Hall of Fame for <laughs> on loan. <laughs> Look at his face. How long would it be there, Mike? I don't know, but I can tell you, one day is going to be too many. <laughs> one day is going to be too many. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. All right, all right. You don't have to. You don't have. There's plenty of other stuff. Hold on, no, no. I want you to th f finish your thought here. What are you thinking? <laughs> Is there a, is there a possibility at all? Is there a scenario in which you would let the Hall of Fame on his induction ceremony for you know let's just call it a month? Okay, if Dale asked him, he'd like to do it. As long as I get it back, yeah, it's Danny's, so he needs to get it back. Well, it'll be Danny Junior's sooner yeah, or later. Yeah. But it's not even a case or nothing. It's just sitting on top of a cabinet. See how people do with the houses when they have something special. Mm -hmm. They Show oh, it off. You've got. I can't believe you got room. I can't believe your, it's not in the attic. I can't believe you got room in your regular house. <laughs> I, still don't, I don't. I still don't have one. Nobody can see it. Of course, I don't have many visitors either. So wait, you've got it out, but it's hidden away. In a, mm. Yeah, it's in Dan Junior's old room. Oh, it's Nash's room now. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> Hopefully, it's out of reach from it little is. Nash. It is. Wild man. Right on top of the gun cabinet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have Danny Senior's uh, old dining room table in my house. Oh, you do, don't you? Yes, I, I thought do. you'd done sold that thing a long time ago. Shoot, no, man, it's your table. I kind of can't hang on to that. <laughs> I actually value the things that people, you know, belong <laughs> to others, and, and I like to show them off. Anybody right. that comes to my house and say, "You know whose table that was?" It's Danny Senior's table. You don't. So, um, I don't want to end on this conversation, but I wanted to, I wanted <laughs> oh, to talk about um, that uh, the dad's death in February in uh, Daytona. So, and I don't even know that I want to ask you anything, but um, do you, me and you rode together to the hospital. Yeah. Do you remember getting in the car? Yeah. I don't. Do you remember how me, why me and you? Why not, why wasn't, do you? Well, it's weird how that happened because I, I went, I actually went back, I, I was in the pits, the Bobozer pit, tiring the pit down. Uh-huh. And something just told me, I think I asked, I might have asked you already, and you probably remember, I might have said, hey, is 
is your dad all right or something like that or is Dale all right or something and then you said something I don't know what you said but I went back to work and I, I was sitting there and I'm like something ain't right so I took off and I started running and I ran to the garage and ran towards the hospital, I guess. And there y'all come on a golf cart, I assume. And I got with you, and then we got in a van and we went over there. I always kind of wondered how how we found each other uh, because it was, you know, I was I was in another I was I went to the Enfield Care Center, and then um, then I, next thing I know, I was at the hospital. But you were with me, yeah. and I didn't know how we got together. We rode over to the hospital in a car by ourselves, and we got pulled up, and they pulled us up to the emergency room entrance. Mm-hmm. And me and you got out and walked in there. And as soon as we walked in there, there was um, that the the room dad's in is like right there. And nothing uh, nothing stopped us from or stopped me from walking in there and taking a look, you know, and looking in there. And, uh, I mean, it was all just – I mean, there's a lot of people, right? I mean, there was 30 people in that entrance way. Yeah. Either there because of dad, or they had their own personal reasons. If another family member in that unit, whatever, right? There was, there was, it was a busy spot. Um, but I remember going in there, and then me and you, and then the next thing I know, me and you are in this room. Remember that? Oh, some kind of room with a bunch waiting of people. room, bunch of people, and me and you just sat there together. Wall to wall people. Yeah, and we just sat there. I don't know why. We was waiting for something. I don't know why, because, you know, I remember going in there when we first walked in. Teresa was there, I think. Yeah. And I think she asked, I know she asked me, I don't know what she said to you, but if I wanted to go in, and I told her no. Yeah. So I didn't go in, but you did, I guess. Yeah, just for a second. I just remember picking my head around the corner and looking in there. But uh, you, me and you sat in a room together. A uh, bunch of people came in and out of that room over the next 20 or 30 minutes. They're wall tripping a couple other people. And then they took me and maybe you into a smaller room, and we sat and talked. Some man came, and it started explaining to Teresa uh, and us, I guess, about, like, what the next steps were, Uh what we were, what the rest of the day would look like, what we were gonna, what what they were gonna say to the public, right, or what all was about to happen next, right? Mm-hmm. And Teresa's getting this information maybe from Mike Hilton or somebody, or or I, I don't know who it was, um, but uh, I got out of there and back to you, and then I said, remember I looked at you and I said, you ready to get out of here? And I probably said yeah, because yeah. I don't I don't remember even coming back to I remember getting back to the track. Yeah. But that's it. I looked at you and I said, "You want to get out of here?" And you said, "Yeah." And because we knew Dad was gone, mm-hmm. and there just wasn't no reason to be there. I think I called Kelly from that room. Really? At Mama's house. They were all up there, and told her yeah, everything you knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bad, and bad time. It was tough. We get in the car and we rode back, and I remember we went into my bus, and Tony and Tony Jr. were there. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. We went back to the track and went in my bus, and that's when Tony and Tony Sr., Tony Jr. and Tony Sr. were there, and we told them everything we knew. <clears throat> and then I don't remember anything after that. I, don't, I remember I don't, getting on the plane. I don't remember getting on the plane. I don't remember going home. That was a long ride home. I it was. That. And mm. then I remember, I remember then we all ended up at Memo's house. I think it was the same night. You remember that? Yeah, I think so. Whole whole family was there. Yeah. You know, the one thing, I mean, we kept racing. We went, you know, we went back to the racetrack and we kept working. You weren't working at DEI at the time. No. So you go back to the meal. When you're at the meal, I'm sure everybody that knows you is coming up to you. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And for a long time, yeah. too long. Yeah. I know you didn't get to DEI until 04, but. Um, did you have any thoughts about like, did that make you want to be in at the shop? Did that make you maybe think maybe not about going to the racetrack at all? No, I still wanted to go to the racetrack because I don't know. I just, I didn't know nothing else to do. I don't reckon, but go to the racetrack and that probably made it better. 
being know, at the track. Being being at the track. Yeah. With you and everybody else. Yeah. Because we were still a group. Yeah. You know. And, I felt the same way. I didn't want to be anywhere but at the track. No, where else would you be? Yeah. Nowhere. So, did it make you want to go full time? They make you know you're working. We got to yeah. remember you're at this mill. You had worked there for 25 years. You know, and that was that's hard to walk away from. Yeah, I want I wanted to get in full racing, full time. Yeah. What was the moment? I guess for you. I know what I felt like in different parts of the year and after that win at Daytona and all that, but like as his brother, when what were what was the moment for you where you felt some closure? That race at Daytona. Yeah. Like it was for everybody, I think. Yeah. What did Harvick's win at Atlanta do for you? Did that make – I mean, I, I could no. – especially if you guys – if it, for you guys it would be mixed emotions. I don't like – I can imagine I don't like anybody seeing is somebody else driving that car. Yeah, it was mixed for me. Yeah. And the other thing that's mixed, and I don't have really hard feelings about it, is, is putting three back on the track because Richard said he would never do it. Richard told Mama he would never do it. But he did. Yeah. Um, but that's fine. It is. You know, I, got, I had an opinion about that. And uh, thinking about Harvick's win um, – I know how the I know how the July win felt for me, you know, and you know how it felt for you. I imagine that win in Atlanta felt the same way for Richard and those guys, Chocolate and all those guys. You're probably right. You know, all those people that were working and plugged into that car. Um, and so it was a weird feeling for me to see them. We had just won, though, at Rockingham, right? We had just won with Park. And we had just celebrated a win, and so it was like a continuation of that when Harvick wins. It was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's the next thing, right? Park wins, Harvick wins, Richard Childress celebrates, DI celebrates. When Richard called and said, hey, I want to bring the three back, um, so there's if we're doing double digits, we're not doing triple-digit numbers, you can't really retire our numbers. You can't retire the 43 no. and all that. And there's these kids that play sports. Austin Dillon yeah. wore a three on the back of his jersey when he was playing T-ball as an eight-year-old kid, right? Yeah. I'm just making this shit up. But, you know, he's he's wore this number three on the back of his jersey all through his childhood. Right. And to deny him the chance to continue to do that, it means something, you know, to him personally. Correct. So I kind of felt like it was fair. I thought they should have maybe changed the font. <laughs> All right, guys, I know a little bit about cars. So believe me when I tell you that Tire Pros, they're the real deal. They've got great people, great service, and they can take care of all your automotive maintenance needs. Plus, they're a sponsor of this show, so you know they got great taste in podcasts. So check out Tire Pros. Follow them on Facebook and tell them that I sent you. <laughs> 